series book talks this morning we are going to be talking about children's books and specifically children's art and music books um so we've got a lot planned so i'm going to start it off with mr mike our new children's librarian awesome so one of its books of course is pete the cat i love pete the cat so much that I and my wife made a costume for Pete the Cat. And this was the first book I had discovered. I love my work. And the great thing about these books is um, there's uh, music that goes with them. In fact, you can download uh, for a free song. And the, uh, the guy who writes this, Mr. Eric, Eric Litwin, um, he narrates it and then he sings. He sings and plays the guitar. And one of the things is about Pete the Cat is he's very laid back. And one of his things he says all the time is because it's all um, and not to worry. And another thing is, is there's a lot of interaction. Uh, you get the kids to, because there's a lot of repetition. And one of the things they get to say is good. Now my favorite Pete the Cat book is Pete the Cat Saves Christmas. Um, it's awesome. And basically, um, it's got two things. Santa's list was so big, Pete felt so small, but at Christmas we give, so he gave it his all. And so that's, he said, no matter how big or small you are, as long as you give it your all. And then the song that goes with it is, give it your all, give it your all. At Christmas we give. And that's like, once I read this book, that's like the most requested song. Kindergartners and UPKers, they love it. It's real easy to learn. Now, Eric Litwin then split off from the illustrator, James Dean, and worked with another illustrator, Tom Lichtenfeld. And he wrote a book called Groovy Joe, Groovy Joe and this is called Ice Cream and Dinosaurs. And again, it, it's very, it's all, this one's all about sharing um, and having a good time. And there's a song that goes along with it. Um, and uh, there are dinosaurs. So the kids love it with, um, and, and again, about sharing, he shares his ice cream. And then of course they run out of ice cream. So what do you do? So you have to find out. I like the Eric Litwin books. He does a really nice job. I I like uh, Pete the Cat. What was the what was the thing he always says? It glitched a little, and I didn't hear it on the video when you just said it. Oh, uh, um, he always because it's all good. I mean, this one's all about his white shoes. He keeps stepping in other things, and like. If I was that this young, I would not have been able to deal with this book. But for Pete the Cat, maybe he would have taught me to deal with getting in mud, get stepping in things. You step in right. things all the time. But hey, it's it happens. <laughs> and it's all good. That's great. I love that. So I love fun. that attitude. Because like you said, that helps uh, kids who might be a little more uptight about things like that. Um, I know as a mom, I was always a little more uptight about that too. I didn't want to, I think, cause I just didn't want to clean things up. You know, I didn't want the mess, but. Oh, um, well, there's that too. <laughs> but you kind of learn to let go of that, you know, especially as the kids, you know, more experience you have with them. So that's really cool. He's a good one. And I look forward to uh, seeing Pete the cat more in our library, so. <laughs> Okay, so um, I'm going to talk about a couple of books that I um, chose. Um, the first one is a new book that we have. It's called Anana Mouse, and that is by Vicki Van Sickle and illustrated by Anna Paroli. This is about, um, it's kind of like a nod to Banksy, the artist. I don't know if you know who he is, but he's the guy who kind of anonymous anonymous uh, artist who goes around mostly in bigger cities and he um, creates art on the walls or anywhere 
And a lot of times it's political or, you know, social comments or whatever. But, um, but anyway, so I think that's kind of the, uh, the uh, influence of this book. Um, and so this little mouse, he's, you know, goes around and creates art everywhere. And it, and it's really cute. Um, the pictures are great. They do a lot with um, the, the regular colors are, are kind of are background colors, but all of his art is this bright pink. So he always creates this beautiful bright pink thing. And it always, you know, it cheers everyone up basically is the, is the message. And it makes people look at things differently. And then one day Anonymous disappears and they don't know what happened to him, but um, you find out he goes off into the uh, uh, country, I think, and creates his art everywhere in the world. But it, this, the line that I love is, thanks to Anonymous, they looked at the city in a whole new way. And so they were, um, all the creatures there suddenly looked at things that might be just natural in nature, like the spider web, and suddenly they look at it as art. Um, or the little bird who stepped in some paint and his little footprints went all around and suddenly you start to see the beauty all around you. So I just thought I love that message or whatever of this book. So I highly recommend this. It's a, not lots of words, it's mostly pictures, but it's a, you know just a great little story. So that's my first one, definitely. And that was a new book. Now, I'm, the other one I chose is an older book. It actually was put out, I think, published in 2002. So it goes back a little ways. But um, everyone knows Sandra Boynton, I believe. Um, she's famous for many, many books, kids' books, lots of fun. Um, and she also is very musical and does a lot of music. Um, and my favorite one that was huge in our household. It was called Philadelphia Chickens. Now this is a great collection of songs um, and they're by famous people. I, um, it's really cool. The book comes with a CD so you can, you can listen along. And it's, um, the Bacon brothers, you know, Kevin Bacon and his brother have a band. They're one of the, the artists in it. Meryl Streep sings on this. Laura Linney, Eric Stoltz, Patti Lapone, um, you know, Scott Bakula. <laughs> I mean, people that you might not even think about that, you know, sing. Um, but I love it because so, so what it does is the book gives you the, the lyrics basically and all the little artwork that, you know, this one called Cows is very funny. That's the other thing, of course, most of the songs are very funny and silly. Um, Oh, and Kevin Klein does a song in here that is, um, I'm trying to remember the name of it. We're very, very busy. And it goes at the speed of light. It is so fast. And there are so many words in such a tiny little spot. It's real, I, it's, I can't even, it's hard to just read it and sing along because it's so fast. And he does it with impeccable diction because he's Kevin Klein. Um, but anyway, so they go through, they, all of the songs have their little, you know, little pages. And then at the back, there's the actual music for all of it. So, you know, there's, it's, it's got, it's got everything, you know, you've got the lyrics, the music, and then you get a CD to play along. This used to be our favorite CD in our house. Um, and whenever we took rides in the car and went somewhere, that was the one we listened to because her music, the music that's in it is not just kids music. It, it's, it's just good music. Um, and I, I found this quote that she said, um, Sandra Boynton said, they said, children's music shouldn't sound any different from adult music. She said, I hope that if you were hearing any of my music playing in the next room, you wouldn't say, oh no, someone put a children's album on. And, and it's true, that's exactly the way we felt about it. And that's what made it so wonderful. And I highly recommend it. We ended up buying it because we just were wearing out the CD. We kept borrowing it from the library. So um, so another one, another great one, musical book. So go ahead. Yeah, but the Philadelphia Chicken book, I believe there are some, sh there are clips YouTube on YouTube. Yes. Check out they have like a video with it is that what you said because i know they came across yeah a video yep yeah that, that's where i discovered 
yeah. Philadelphia chicken. Um, yep. We came across it just because we love Sandra Boynton's books. And then one day we saw this and we yeah. thought, oh my gosh, that's so funny. And then we loved it from there on. So, yeah. Well, speaking of famous people, this is called Broadway Barks by Bernadette Peters oh. um, and pictures by Liz Murphy. We got to see Bernadette Peters in concert up to Syracuse. And they, of course, were selling books. And this was the book she had written. It's even autographed. So it's awesome. But anyway, it's a neat book about, um, it's actually about her. Um, she and another lady in Broadway have a, a, a thing for animals. Um, and, and this is all to their, the homeless dogs and cats. Uh, and what they do is they put on a concert, Bernadette and whoever she can else get to do to raise money for the dogs and cats. Um, but this book is about that, about a dog who gets adopted by a little girl. And actually there's a, a redhead in here who he also meets, who of course is Bernadette. And it's uh, Broadway Barks is the name of the group, but there's also a, a lullaby in it. And there's a CD with it as well. Um, you listen to her, Bernadette singing the lullaby as well as hear her tell the story. So it's really cool. So that's Broadway Barks by Bernadette we, Peters. Do we have that in our library? I don't know, but I can fix that, hopefully. <laughs> and I wonder if she's if actually we got don't. another book out too as well. If we don't, probably Maybe it's someone does. Somewhere. I would guess probably yes. Yeah. That's a great one. Okay, so Marie, do you want to give us your uh, take on your books? Yeah, so um, I have a couple of books today. I have one that is specifically about music, which this story itself is very fascinating to me, and I'm very glad that we got this book. This is a um, new children's book that we have in at the library. You can check it out anytime. It is in the nonfiction section specifically because this is a true story about a young girl who got to play the piano for Abraham Lincoln. So her, her name is uh, Teresa Corena. And um, she, she just, she had learned how to play the piano from a really young age. Her father taught her. This is really um, a, a beautiful, just sort of like story about family in general. Um, and then of course, what ends up happening is uh, she was in, she, they were, her family is from Venezuela and a revolution happened in Venezuela about the same time um, as the civil war happened. If you know any sort of Latin American history, if you don't, great, you can learn it in this book because it does a really good job of talking about it. Um, and of course you all know I'm a history person, so I love this book. Um, so the, her family had to flee the revolution in Venezuela and they went to uh, the United States where she continued playing the piano, you know, going after her past passion of music. And um, they just, you know, she kept playing until one day Abe Lincoln was like, hey, want to come play the White House for us? And she did. And it was really cool. Um, and it's cool for a lot of reasons, because first of all, she's she's a little girl, a little girl playing a piano at the White House. That's so cool. Also, she's a person of color. Again, amazing, love it. Um, and then the other thing I wanna talk about just real quick is look at the art of this book. I am a person who still, like I don't have children. I don't have nieces. I don't have nephews. I don't have small cousins, but I still love to read children's books. Children's books are for everybody because look at this, the art, even just to look at the art, so good the artistry of this book is so pretty it's almost like a collage type and there are so many textures and then like you know as she's playing the piano it transports her to another place and it's just so cute it's just such a good book um and then there she is there's the artist rendition of her she's so cute um and then of course it gets into when they had to flee and all of that stuff. And this is, this is just a really cool book uh, to learn about a little bit of music history, but also just history in general, which I think is really cool and to keep important and keep in mind right now. Um, well, I love, I love the picture. I'm trying to find the room. other. It has a very three dimensional. Yeah, look. it's, oh, this is what I wanted. It does. So what they did was they ended up putting posters around Washington DC that she was gonna be playing at the uh, 
White House. And I just, I love, I love this picture. Um, I, I, the whole book is just wonderful to look at. Like there's something to be said about wonderful artistry in children's books specifically because of, you know, stimulating children's brains and stuff like that. But like just the, the sheer artistry that is coming from this is just yeah. amazing. Um, and it's, it's telling a true story. It's like, uh, there, we have another book that I'm going to talk about just real quick about, um, a group of uh, librarians who like saved their library. It's a picture book and the pictures in it again are amazing, but it's a true story and it's telling history at the same time. So I love picture books like this that are like nonfiction books that give you a true story, but make it fun to learn about, you know? And I feel like there are um, a lot of uh, nonfiction books for kids that are sort of picture books that aren't necessarily that way so something like this it really felt like I was just reading a picture book reading a story so yeah. this was this is something that I highly recommend to everybody to pick up and read when they're at the library next um that's wonderful yeah I love the pairing of the history with the you know the story that's just yeah. that's just great me Perfect. too well, and the other thing is it gives two aspects of history. Like uh, a lot of people probably like, especially younger people in our country don't know a lot of Latin American history. So the fact that this is weaving that in is like, oh, awesome. And we get a little like Civil War history uh, refresh, which is cool. Yeah. Um, and she's playing the piano. That's so cool. For Abe Lincoln. Like what? So cool. Anyway. I mean, of course, it was easier to get into the White House then, but still. Um, so the next book I'm going to talk about is uh, another new book that we have in the library. Um, it is called The Altogether Quilt. And this book is um, specifically about family, community, and like a community art center uh, where a bunch of people were getting together and doing art together, which is so cool. Um, I also really enjoy this book because quilting is an art and I will fight anybody who says any different. Quilting is an art. Um, so this is just, this is a really cool book about uh, four different little families um, who are making a quilt, but they're all doing it sort of separately and they're doing it in their own way, but then they come together to join the quilt at the end, um, which is really cool. And this is another really amazing book of like artistry it, it sort of reminds me of Suzanne Bloom's type of drawing um how she illustrates all of her books like this is the community center this is so awesome and it's so like like this book is just full of diversity which I love y'all know I love that by now if you haven't been watching our book talks I love diversity um and so that's really cool and it, it, it starts off with uh, a little girl named Jennifer and her grandma and then it goes to uh, a little boy named Maurice and his grandpa. Also, I love the, the fact of like, um, you know, men making quilts. That's awesome. Love that because not enough like people uh, reaffirm the idea of men doing crafts or like whatever that are like, have been socialized to think that they're women's crafts, you know? So like the fact that this includes that is really awesome. Um, and then there's a bunch of the different families who made their different quilt squares to put in the all together quilts. So yeah, this is just really cool. And community art in general is just um, a really cool idea to me, um, like making something on your own and then bringing it together and having it be like a full thing is just incredible. There were, there was, when I was at Geneseo, we uh, occasionally would do a community mural where everybody could come in and paint and like add their own perspective to the mural and like, you know, help out. And it would just turn out to be representative of the community as a whole. And it was really amazing. Um, so I love that sort of stuff, like community and art put together. So that's another book that I really recommend for anybody who's coming into the library anytime soon. It is new. Um, so both of these books, uh, like this one is in nonfiction. This one is in our regular picture book section, but they will be on top of the shelves themselves because they're new books. So I love that. Um, it's funny because looking at, if you look at Michael right now, he's got two quilts behind him. Yep. 
We're, we're a big quilting house. Hanging on the wall, which definitely makes it a piece of art. I well, mean, and the one right behind us was made by a man, Robin was, Blakeman. Mm -hmm. That's what I was thinking too. Um, because Robin used to do a lot of um, yeah. quilting, quilting and he did yeah. beautiful, amazing things. And when he left, you're talking about doing an all together quilt. When he moved away, he gave each of his friends a square of fabric and we were supposed to put something meaningful on it that, you know, for him to remember us all by. And then it was put into a big quilt. So it just, it, that just all kind of goes together. How wonderful. <laughs> I mean, that just brought that memory back for me. So that's wonderful. Quilts and, mean a lot. Quilts can mean a lot. Marie sort of brings up a good point too about uh, the books that she shows that picture books aren't just for little kids anymore. Yeah. Picture books are really for everybody. And I encourage Absolutely. everybody like, especially like Broadway Barks, and mm -hmm. the, the piano and, and the quilt. Yeah. And oh. the one I'm going to talk about next is one I used to read to my third graders. Um, I only have a picture of the cover, unfortunately. The book is available in the system. So if anybody is interested, we can get it for you. It's called Pictures at an Exhibition. Now this sort of fits in in our music book or in our, in our month, March is Music in Our Schools Month and also Art in Our Schools Month. Um, so like the quilts, this is also not just about music, but it's about art because of the pictures. And it's all about how the, this piece of music, pictures at an exhibition, um, comes to be. And what happens is Modest Mazorski, who is the composer of this piece, has a friend named Victor Hartman, who's an artist. And um, it tells about their lives. And there's a third guy. Um, and unfortunately, I, usually I've got this story, I used to have it memorized, but the third guy was more of a literary guy and he would write reviews on things. Uh, but what happens is Victor Hartman dies and Modest Mazorski blames himself. Um, and then uh, his friend does a, a, a showing of Victor Hartman's, all of his artwork. They collect all of his artwork and they do a, a, a showing of it. And he cons Modest into going to the thing because Modest doesn't want to go to it. But then after seeing all the pictures, Modest is moved to um, write the music and uh, based on each of the pictures. So it's really cool. And Modest works through his, you know, his pain through the music. And then his, the other friend writes about pictures at an exhibition and tells, tells the world about it. And so that's, this is one of the pieces that everybody remembers Modest Mazorski for. They don't remember, he, he loved to write operas, um, but we don't really remember him so much for his operas. We remember him for this piece. Uh, and it's cool because this book, it, it, it deals with grief uh, as well as the music. Um, and I, I always stop and talk, I said, is that really an okay w way to act? Um, and the kids say, no, and I said, I, you know, we talk about that it's okay to be sad and sometimes it takes us longer than others. So that's, it's a great book to talk about death. Um, it's also, the creativity is just amazing. The pictures, uh, one other thing they do with this, each set of pages has a, a border that's all Russian. It's Russian artwork uh, and each of it is supposed to, it's part of the history that the it helps tell the story or foreshadow things to come. So that's cool too. So it, it really is, it's music, art, and I mean, it's a good story. And it goes along, it, it's, it is historical, but it, I always call it historical fiction. Uh, cause we don't know, cause the kids always say, is this really, I said, most of this is true, but they don't know exactly what each of them said and what each of them did. They just know from letters and they put the story together that's all history is, is, is. taking primary sources yeah. and putting them together and trying to make a narrative out of it. That's all it is. <laughs> That's history, man. That's history. Yeah. That's cool. <laughs> it, it's really cool. And I, I would recommend anybody who's into music or, you know, art, whatever. This is another one of those good combination books. Yeah. And like I said, we have it in the system. We can get it yeah. for you. And then you can go listen to the music and see if it matches the pictures. Because that's oh. always what we did in, my, in class. Yeah. We, I had them, I played the gnome and I had them draw a picture to go with it. And then I showed them, well, this is the one that it was. So they were always. 
That's wonderful. It's neat. I would so like to read that. Yeah, me too. Picture books are wonderful. Like you were saying, they are just not just for kids. I know that when we get them in at the library, everyone reads them because they're just they're just so great. There's such beautiful art and the stories are, I mean, they're simply told, but sometimes that simplicity is, is what makes it a beautiful story. You know, you don't need to, to weigh it down with everything else. It just, you know, I just love that. So, yeah, no, I agree. And as uh, Colleen just said, whenever we, we get in the picture books, um, we, each one of us in the staff, typically, we sit down and we look at them and we read them because we all, there's just something so wonderfully simplistic about um, a picture book and getting across a point without bogging down the narrative itself. Yeah. Um, like I, I, like I said earlier, I don't have nieces, nephews. I have a collection of picture books <laughs> over there. Like I have three bookshelves. You can't see them. You can only see the one right now, but I have three bookshelves and I have a whole collection of picture books sitting over there because like my dad knows I like them. So he gets them for me. And, um, like he got one for me for my graduation and there's one on Edgar Allan Poe that I have over there. <laughs> and there's one on Russian fairy tales and like, picture books are so picture books. okay <laughs> yeah, yeah i still buy things. picture books for my wife because they're yeah. books about the, the loved ones i mean they're really supposed to be love towards your kids but you, they work for your wife or your spouse or your significant yeah. other yeah it's called cow or i'll love you till the cows come home so it's a really <laughs> cute book love it that's great yeah, and like you said, Michael, I, I probably should have mentioned that at the beginning. The reason we chose this was because March is music and art, is it, in your in your schools? So we thought yeah, that would be- Yeah, music and art in our schools. And I thought that, so we thought that might be appropriate for March. So that's why we chose the music and art children's books. So, um, so yeah, uh, like most of these, as we said, and probably all of them are available within the system, but most are at our library. So- um, come on in and check them out, uh, like always. Um, uh, next week, we are doing, uh, oh, we have a special guest next week. Uh, Mike Taft, local author, is going to be uh, with us, and we're going to talk about um, the genre of steampunk. Um, it's kind of a newish, I don't know, or a newish trend anyway. Um, and a lot of people don't really know what it is and, and it is, you know, it, it, it takes some explaining. So I think it's important if you're interested, come and listen to us. Even if you you might not think you're interested, but come listen anyway. Um, so we're going to talk about steampunk and some novels and books that are out that are steampunk and you can, under, so you can, everybody can understand that and maybe you want to read some of them. So um thanks for being here thanks for listening and we will see you 